Hi, I'm Art Bergeron, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here on Nantucket. If you haven't seen this show before, uh, I, I, my day job is as an elder law attorney, but this is not about my day job. This is about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations at the Salt Marsh, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is very simple. They want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's on Nantucket, that means right here. They don't want to move away with their kids. They don't want to go to the mainland. They definitely don't want to go to Martha's Vineyard. They want to be right here. And so <clears throat> the question is, if you identify with Frank and Mary, who are the people you need to know and what are the programs you need to know about in order to stay right here on Nantucket? So my wonderful co-host, Allison Forsgren, uh, who we've been doing the show now for like a long time. It's like a couple of years together, has, is, is in charge of finding the great guests who can help you figure out all of that. And we have a terrific guest today who's going to be talking about something of, of a lot of relevance to Frank and Mary and everybody else on the island. So, Allison, who do we have today? Um, we are fortunate today to have, for the very first time, which I'm just, I just realized, Libby Gibson, who is Nantucket's town manager. Um, Libby, um, welcome to the show. And uh, I'm sure you'll have a lot of interesting things for us to catch up on. So, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here with you guys. And now, Libby, as we said at the beginning of the show, my, my job is to provide comic relief, keep track of the time, and ask people where they came from. So, because inevitably, people who are on Nantucket have a backstory. So, so how did you end up being here? Are you have you been here a long time? And how long have you been here? In uh, great questions. I arrived on Nantucket before I was born. Um, it's one of those situations. Um, I wasn't born here, but my great grandparents became became visitors, summer visitors. And fast forward to my dad's family was summer visitors, and uh, I was born in New Jersey. My dad, my mom and dad um, were living there at the time, and they subsequently moved to California. And I grew up, lived in California for about ten years, and then. We came to Nantucket every summer. We moved to Nantucket when I was 10. And I've been here ever since. I went to Nantucket High School. I went to Wheaton College in Norton, Mass. I came back here after Wheaton and didn't really know what to do with myself. So I, there was a job available in the Board of Selectmen's at the time's office. I applied and got it. And I have been here ever since, kind of rose up through the ranks. And I don't think I intend to leave. Um, you never know, but I here and love it and have my raised my family here and here I am. You know, and as a matter of fact, it turns out there is a lot of homegrown talent here, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we've, we've we've interviewed we've interviewed several. Um, the person who was working for you and was at the island home and is now at the hospital, right? Another another. Yes, yes. Taylor. Taylor was great, right? When I remember her at a, at a meeting of the uh, of the uh, of the the what I, what, I, what I always think of as the as the uh, the council and agent, the group the the, the group that manages um, the salt marsh. Yes. And I remember the chairman of the board, you know, re re reminding Taylor that he was her teacher when she was uh, a <laughs> that, that does happen from time to time. In from fact, time I got an email recently from a former teacher giving me some Zoom tips. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that great? So, 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 Libby, I know that 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 Allison convinced you to come on the show to talk about town meetings. And beforehand, we were talking about the fact that uh, in a, that my previous Zoom show today, I was we were talking with my my co-host who is in Westboro is one of the selectmen, and the the guest was the town uh, manager there, mm -hmm. and we were talking about the poultry bylaw. <laughs> which somehow this selectman got roped into doing, and it is all about uh, uh, poultry noise and how many chickens you can have in your yard and whether they can cross the street. You know, that's a separate thing. So, <laughs> so and, and I had a, 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 we were saying, you know, some all sometimes those kinds of, by, of, ordinate, of bylaws um, are a lot, uh, generate a heated debate. So one of the things that I'm interested in as you go through the, town meeting is, are there any that you think are going to generate that kind of excitement for you in Nantucket? This year? Well, uh, I, it's hard to be that level of excitement. And I would say we probably don't have anything quite like that. We do have a number of bylaws relating to bicycles and including bicycle right of way 
and sort of replacing vehicle right of way with bicycle right of way. We do have one animal related bylaw, but that has to do with dog fines, viol dog violation fines. We have a noise bylaw that is likely to generate some discussion, but I can't say that we have anything about chicken care, chicken numbers, anything to do with chickens. No. And, and, and at some point also, if, if or maybe even at the end, if you can just kind of, you could talk a little bit about just the logistics of, you know, when it is, what time you show up, yep. wh why it's safe to go, all of that stuff. That'll be great. Sure, absolutely. I actually think that to outline, since it's gonna be the very first time we've had an outdoor town meeting in my many years here, um, where to go, how to park, what to wear, et cetera, would, would be questions that I have, so. Want to start there? That's great. Yeah. So town meeting starts on Saturday, June 5th, 9 a.m. It, it will be at the Bacchus playing fields, which are, you know, behind the elementary and intermediate schools. It will be outdoors under tents. Our rain date is Sunday, June 6th. We are, you know, have every finger crossed that it is not going to rain that day. So hopefully it won't. Um, if it if it does, we go to Sunday starting at nine, but let's pretend it's not gonna rain. We will have tents and chairs set up. We, we have this set up for about 600 people. And we, are, we don't know how many people we're going to get. We do have a section set off for non-voters. We are asking that non-voters bring their own chairs. We hope you won't need it, but the voters need to have first priority for the chairs. We will have a check-in for everybody. You can't just, you know, come right on in. You're going to be checking in. You're going to get a handheld electronic voting device. We had this last year for the first time. We will, the, the big thing that we are going to have to, to deal with this year is we will not have a projection screen. So it, it's going to be challenging and tricky to deal with amendments. And we have had a lot of internal discussion about this town meeting in light of that and that it's outdoors. So the, so just here's, here's a couple of things. The seats will be physically distanced. There will be porta potties available. There'll be hand sanitizer available. We will have a water bottle filling station. Microphones will be available. They will be sanitized between each use. We are requesting masks. We know that we don't have a local mask order anymore outdoors if you can't social distance, if, if you can social distance. But we do think it would be a good idea for people to wear their masks. It's, it's we're just asking. Um, as far as sort of what to bring and what to wear, and Allison, that was a good question. What we think you should bring is a water bottle, snacks. There will not be food provided. Sunscreen, perhaps, if you know it looks like it's gonna be a sunny day. A writing utensil, perhaps a pad of paper. Bring your warrant. You will be getting your warrant in the mail within the next week or so. If you're a non-voter, bring a chair. And as far as what to wear, I think wear something comfortable. You know, Nantucket weather can change, as we all know. I would, I would probably bring a sweater that you can take off during the day and just wear comfortable clothes. I imagine we will, if we aren't, don't finish on Saturday, we will probably go till five or so. If it looked like we could finish and finish in the foreseeable future, we'll probably keep going until, until we do. But you know, if it starts getting dark and we're not just not looking good to finish, then, then we will adjourn for the evening. Uh, we hope we don't have to, so we're working on a lot of outreach for this. We're going to be doing some radio promos. Thank you very, very much for having me on here because it's really helpful to, to tell people what's going on in a, in a video setting like this. We are doing videos on the articles that also have ballot questions. We have a voter's guide that we're getting ready, which is meant to be a, an easily understandable booklet of all of the town warrant articles. We will have, I, I'm going to Rotary in a couple of weeks and the Nantucket Town Association. And uh, we'll probably have a special town manager e-newsletter about town meeting and a lot of social media outreach. I hope we don't have to tell people things like this, but please don't bring things like your dog to town meeting. I kind of 
possibly see that people might do that. Um, but dogs aren't really going to be a good idea. We, as far as parking goes, parking will be available at all the school parking lots. Extra handicap spots will be so designated. We will probably have a police officer or two present to guide people as to where to park. Um, carpooling is encouraged. If you live in the immediate area, certainly walk to the site. And use of the NRTA shuttle is also encouraged. Uh, um, amendments. We, we are sort of in the middle of a discussion with the moderator about amendments, but the current advice is to get your amendment to the moderator, if you have one, if anybody's thinking of one, as soon as possible. People who have amendments that are more comprehensive than the average you know, word change here or there should bring copies with them. And we actually are thinking bring 500 copies or five or 600 copies with you. I, I do have a little bit of a concern that the copies are gonna end up all over the playing field. So we need to be careful about that. And there will be trash cans in the immediate vicinity. So please also be sure to put your trash in there. We are on a school field and we don't wanna mess it all up. So consult with the moderator well in advance of June 5th if you are thinking about an amendment or have one and get it to her as soon as possible. And she's going to do her absolute best to have amendments done the old fashioned way by reading them, and explaining them. But that's where a pad of paper and a pen, a writing utensil could come in here. Yes, we do think it's safe. We, um, you know, it's outside. Uh, the tents will not have um, walls, you know, it's just going to be overhead tents. And, you know, the chairs probably aren't going to be, they're not going to be cushy and, and super comfortable. They're, they're event chairs. Well, <clears throat> I'm, I'm really glad that I heard that summary because I have been thinking about going to town meeting as a, as a non-voter just to see it. Uh, because, well, because among other things, I know that there is a, I know that there is a, there is some, some, something up regarding our island home. And it's, I've, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of our island home. I've come, I've always, as I always tell people on the show, this is my favorite nursing home in the state. People oh. have no idea, you know, people have no idea, you know, but, yeah. but, you know, for a lot of reasons, not necessarily because it's beautiful, but because of the size and all that. So I was planning on trying to go if I can get a room. Right, I bet I because of course I waited to try to get a room. Right, this is this may have been a big mistake. Right, but yeah. of course that means I also need a chair. So I have to find I got to get a room that I can take a chair with me to this. Uh, well, I've got a chair for you, Arthur. There you have you a chair? Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. I mean, we we are going to have some extra chairs there. And we really hope like like a couple of hundred. So we're really hoping we don't need to have say to anybody you have to sit in your own chair we don't right. certainly don't want to seem unwelcoming but voters right. do need to have first priority for the chairs okay. of course of course so that was wonderful thanks thanks for that summary thanks for that summary. sure and so what do you think the highlights of town meeting are going to be um or the low lights i don't know how you want to categorize <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, among the more controversial articles are most likely the housing articles and the short-term rental tax article. So the housing articles are not necessarily all in order, but we have some worked into the to our operating budget and our capital budget funding for housing. There is also a citizen article that would seek to dedicate two-thirds of revenue from the room occupancy tax is tr actually what it's called for affordable housing. That is actually not recommended by the finance committee and they have a comment about it. And we have believe we have funded housing um, in a better way in the operating budget and in, in the capital, one of the capital articles, which is article 10. And that is going to require an override at the election on June 15th. The, sh the short term rental article is article 90. And you've probably seen some signs around about it. This, there's been a lot of discussion about it. And that article would restrict short-term rentals. And I would highly suggest that if people want to know more about it, they go to the website and read it. The warrant with all of the motions is on the town website. There is a, and that is a citizen-sponsored article. There is another article that is a citizen-sponsored home rule petition that would allocate a portion of the land bank 
real estate transfer tax for year round housing. And again, that is not recommended by the finance committee. However, again, we think that we are accommodating affordable housing in a more long-term manner with what we are doing in the budgets. So I think those are definitely going to be controversial and raise perhaps some questions. We have a noise bylaw that we've heard some non-voters uh, have some issues with. Um, non-voters aren't necessarily allowed to speak at town meeting. Certainly they can't vote. And uh, and when I say non-voters, I mean seasonal homeowners who have homes here, but they are taxpayers, but they're not voters. That that may have some issues. We have we have a lot of zoning bylaws. There is a variety of bylaw amendments. We we have about 50 citizen sponsored articles out of 112 Warren articles. And and by the way, speaking of other town meetings in other towns, Nantucket is most likely one of the towns in the Commonwealth that has the most number of citizen petitioned articles on their warrant and articles in general. Most of the towns on the Cape have a fraction of what we have. I've been talking to some of my town manager friends on the Cape about outdoor town meetings because a number of them are having outdoor town meetings. And it, it so they don't have projection screens either. Some of them don't even have tents. So we're doing pretty well, we think, with our setup as, as best we can, all things considered. But the, the Cape Towns have, you know, maybe 40 articles. We have 112. Heard of that many articles anywhere. That's, <laughs> I did, and I do a lot of, you know, in, my, in my younger days, I did a lot, of, a lot of permitting work. So I would go to a lot of town meetings. I've never, ever, that's, that's the prettiest, I guess that's why Nantucket is special. That's why Nantucket is special. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a special place. Yeah. So, so I, a, um, I've got another sort of technical question. Um, do you know whether there's Wi-Fi? There'll be Wi-Fi available in the field, or there will there will be whatever Wi-Fi there is now. Okay. So we've we've talked about that a bit as well. There is a separate server for the e-voting, and so they sort of have their own Wi-Fi closed network, and we're not we're not doing our own hotspot or anything like that. So it's it's whatever is there. And we've we've talked about is there a way to show the amendments somehow online and people could access it by their phones or their devices or whatever. And that's more complicated than it sounds. Not everybody has a phone or a device. And we didn't want to, you know, have limited things that only some people can use and not others. I mean, I can I can picture five hundred times how you know however many amendments go out, pieces of paper floating around the field, and I understand your your concern about people using um, the waste baskets. But if it, things were available online, so hopefully, um, you know, we can read our warrant articles not only in print but also online on our tablets. You, you may be able to do that. Yes, I'll I'll I'll, tr I'll check it out. Check it out, yeah. See, yeah. That's so, good. Libby, can I ask another question? Because, because we, you know, Allison and I, one of the one of the things we really like about this show is that it's really a vehicle for a lot of folks, you know, to kind of learn about a particular issue, kind of, you know, uh, you know, without it being in the middle of a town meeting, right? Mm -hmm. So, regarding the articles that you just talked about, because Allison and I can talk about the Saturdays, we have one more show. Actually, we have. We have two more shows before the meeting, but there's one more just in a few because we have twice, twice a, a month. Would there be a particular issue you think where you think it would be really useful to have somebody on the show who would be, you know, like a for and against just to talk to, to talk to help people just understand the perspective of, of one of these articles that you think may really have a, have, you know, a lot of controversy around it? There may, that might be a good idea. There is a Meet the Articles Forum sponsored by the Civic League on May 15th. And they typically have a for and against um, like setup for some of the articles that they think would maybe be the most controversial. I would be a little hesitant to name who should do that. But, you know, probably the sponsor of the Warren article, if it's right. a citizen sponsored article. And then depending on what the motion is, Perhaps the the finance committee chair would would speak to the FinCom motion. So right. that that might be not a bad idea. It might not be a bad idea if the moderator is available. 
to have her come on and just talk a little more about the setup and the amendments, because I'm not right. in charge of the amendments, obviously she is. And she might want to reiterate a little bit more about the technical or procedural issues with town meeting, of which there are, you know, many. Many. Um, we did have Tucker Holland on to talk about his articles or the housing articles. The housing yes. articles, yes, yes. And so, <clears throat> Well, he would definitely be the one to explain the town's position on on the on the housing articles. So I'm sure he did a great job. Yep, he, he did. Was he terrific. Did. Yeah, he did terrific. great job. We we have an interesting article sponsored by citizens, which is adopt Indigenous Peoples Day locally in place of Columbus Day. Wow, and that, that actually generated some discussion at FinCom about how it would work and how would people know things like that. So that, right. I, that'll be interesting. That right. I think is actually something that some other towns are doing as well. Well, fortunately we haven't had to get rid of our high school mascot because whales are definitely okay. <laughs> fortunately. <laughs> yeah, it's probably only a matter of time, but. Yeah. yeah. That's really true. I think, I think, well, that, as I, we were talking earlier, I, I was, that, that, that reminds me of one of the articles that I heard about earlier today from, from Westboro. Uh, the, the the birthplace of Eli Whitney, um, and, and for for whom, as a historical matter, the town seal has a, a cotton ball on it, right? Because Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin, and there is there is so now there is there is a question of changing the town seal, you know, kind of as a result of that, you know, is that an inappropriate town? But so those are the those are the kinds of issues that could, you know obviously really raise, you know, kind of you know larger scale concerns and stuff. So. For sure. So Erica just came in and brought me the warrant as it's been printed. Ooh. And that means it's in the mail. So you oh, should be getting it in time now. Um, and so Libby, is there anything else going on in town government that might, you know, not exactly related to town meeting that you think you would like to share at this at this moment? Any any updates? Oh, well, let's see here. Um, we have a lot of projects underway and a lot, you know, there, there's, there are a lot of road-related projects going on right now, and they are causing some traffic issues. And really, it's one of the only times of year that we can do this, uh, other than fall. Mid -win winter is not necessarily conducive to road work. So, so people, be patient. You are going to find backup, backs up, backups even worse in the Old South Road area over the next few weeks. We obviously have our sewer project on Surfside road that is underway and that is being done at night so it's not as bad as it would be if it was being done during the day but these projects have to get done and you know when else are you going to do them so be patient with the with the road work there's some sidewalk work going on downtown as well i'm trying to think of um it, just generally in town admin we've got a lot going on with pfos we have a consultant that's developing we've we've They've done phase one of a, a project with them, which is to develop a, a risk assessment of where PFAS could be found at various places around the island. It has been found in various places. And, and even when we're also talking about non-town places, PFAS is its own, own whole project. So I won't go into all the details, but it's something we are very actively dealing with. We are working on a facilities uh, master plan that would most likely, in a nutshell, move, consolidate a lot of municipal offices into one building, most likely to be the two fairgrounds road. The town building would be a little bit repurposed to keep some town offices here, expand offices for the courts and the sheriff. And we're working on repurposing other things. The island home obviously remains an issue. As you probably know, we've been having stakeholder input meetings with a facilitator. He is going to be reporting his findings to the board on May 26th. And I don't know what the boards will, how they will react to that, whether they would have another workshop for more public input or make a decision as to how to move forward or what. But that is coming up. And you know that 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 has a connection with the senior center. So pretend for just a second that if the island home were to move, I don't know if it would or not, but if it did, I think the board would have every intention of repurposing the existing site for 
a senior center slash community center, something of that nature, certainly not sell the property. I've heard people express concern that the property would be sold. First of all, you, that would require a town meeting vote. Secondly, I can't imagine that any board would sell the property. You never know, I realize, but I think that would be really short-sighted. And, and certainly the boards I've worked with have never entertained that idea. We've got, what else, road projects. Uh, we're going to start already working on, we've already had some preliminary discussion about our fiscal 23 budget and our fiscal 23 capital plan. So that's, you know, well over a year away, but all that starts around now before we've even adopted the upcoming year's budgets. We still have collective bargaining underway. I'm scanning my desk here because I've got a whole bunch <laughs> of stuff here that I have had meant to do by now and um, I haven't quite done it. We're, we're gonna have a pretty major sewer project starting this fall with the third sewer force main that will run from C Street to the Surfside Treatment Plant. And that's going to be pretty disruptive. So get ready for that. We've had it at the board meeting a couple of times to review the route. The route is approved. We're going out to bid shortly and the work is, is gonna start this fall. Um, let's see, what, uh, let's see what else. Um, that's a lot. <laughs> There's, there's way more, but that, well, no. that some, oh, COVID, of course. How could I forget that? Oh, we're, we're, we're working very much on our plan for the summer. You know, this it's, it's been so challenging just in, in and of itself. It's been challenging, but also the state guidance changes quite frequently. And we, you know, get uh, the website has to be updated all the time. And we're trying to figure out what are we going to be enforcing this summer? and the the state guidance for restaurants and entertainment and gatherings and other events and activities how are we going to deal with those things so um not for nothing but our human services director a certain jericho mealy has been very instrumental in all of this including and, and been a great help to Roberto Santa Maria, our public health director, um, and the vaccinations, they, they have really kept a lot of things online, of course, the hospital also. But that those are huge efforts. And they, I think we're really doing well with them. But but there's there's just a lot going on there. There's so a lot I, going on. I just wanted to suggest to you, Libby, as time goes on, once again, we do these shows twice a month. Uh, and I think there were a lot of Frank and Mary's out there, right? Yeah. You know, because of the of COVID and stuff, you don't get out as much, you know. So there's the inky, but but to actually kind of see what is going on live, you know, once again, to the extent that you want to, you know, have a vehicle to talk about any of those, you know, you're always welcome to come back to the show, right? Because this is this is important stuff. This is just yeah, great. absolutely. Thank you for that. This we'll definitely add you to our if you're not already on there, our list of outreach venues. Great. Great. So, so thank you so much, Allison, for getting Libby to join us. This was like a, you know, I think a really important show. I think it, right now, especially people are kind of focusing more on town meetings and, you know, given the number of Warren articles, you could kind of like start reading the Warren now and you kind of wouldn't be done by like the time of the town meeting. So if you, if, if folks have questions on any of this, um, um, should they call should they call you who should they call about the i would, I would the, say uh they should go to the website www.nantucket-ma.gov the town meeting information is very easy to find they can certainly email town manager at nantucket-ma.gov we're happy to answer questions or direct them to whoever can answer them that's great allison thank you so much for finding libby and getting her out You're of welcome. her libby, thanks for the nice thing about Zoom is you can be at your day job and still be on TV. How great yes, is that? Yes, absolutely. Allison, thank you so much. You're so, welcome. Thank you. thank you. Anytime. Allison, thank you so much. Libby, thank you so much. Folks, I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you get a chance to be at town meeting. I'm trying to get there myself. If I can find myself a room on Nantucket, getting be hard these days. Uh, we hope you enjoy the show, and we will look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here on Nantucket. Thank you very much.